David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a limited edition pen which will be available on Thanksgiving Day for Black Friday here in the U.S. through the Italian retailer Stilo and Stile. Stilo and Stile has partnered with Leonardo to produce a number of outstanding limited edition offerings. For Black Friday last year, they released these two Memento Zeros, the Nebula and the Magma, which were interesting. Then we have my favorite collaboration being the Prisma. Um, I just absolutely love this model. Uh, you just might be seeing this model on my upcoming annual Fig Boots Favorite Things video. Spoiler alert. I'd love this pen. It's one of the sharper looking Leonardo's in my collection. So Stilo and Stile has done a great job with their Leonardo collaborations. Let's take a look at what they came up with this year. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this new pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Stilo and Stile for getting this pen out to me in advance of it going on sale so I could post this review the day the pen is available to purchase. Also, stay tuned for a discount code you could use for this pen as well, which will bring the cost down to a rather attractive price. It arrives in this standard Memento Zero box. Inside we have another box, and then inside we have the actual box. Uh, inside there's a standard use and care guide. Uh, and then we have the pen. This is the Leonardo Momento Zero Cometa. Uh, cometa is the Italian word for comet, which is appropriate for this material. I really like the looks of this pen. Um, it's made from an Italian resin and it really resembles a night sky filled with shimmering stars. The resin is a deep blue and black fused together with silver glitter. Uh, there's then a sandblasting process which utilizes quartz crystals, and it really creates this very nice matte finish, which adds an additional element to the exterior of this pen. Um, I think going with the matte finish was the right choice for this material. It gives it a bit of softness and warmth compared to a more polished exterior. Now, something I think is really cool about this material is that the darker blue and black resin does a good job of hiding the flare uh, of the glitter. Um, you can see here, there is a, a bit near the surface, but most of it is slightly deeper, giving it a more subdued look. Um, th that is a blue portion of the resin here, very close. And you can see here uh, on a black portion, the look is even more subdued and masked. Now, as for a contrast, here's a pen from Bennu, who is well known for their flare and glitter. Now, I know these are stars and not hexagons, but you could see that most of the stars are closer to the surface of the material and there's more of a clear coat or lighter colored resin on the surface, so the glitter stands out more. There's nothing wrong with that look, but I just wanted to show that as a contrast to show how virtually the same elements can be presented in different manners with significantly different results. Uh, the Bennu has more of an in-your-face flair, and the flair of this Leonardo is significantly more subtle. Um, like I mentioned previously, it really resembles a dark night sky filled with shimmering stars millions of light years away. Okay, let's take a look at the top of the cap. It comes to a coned point, which isn't sharp at all. That transitions into the clip. Um, I've always been a big fan of Leonardo's wheeled clips. I think they look sharp and they work well in materials of varying sizes. Um, the cap angles up until about this point where it straightens out. And then we have three thin ruthenium plated bands. All of the exterior trim on this pen is ruthenium plated, which I feel fits in really nicely with the night sky theme of this material. Uh, there is a small step down from the cap to the barrel, which begins with another ruthenium plated band. Uh, on the back side of the cap, it's a little hard to get this in focus, but above the band it is engraved with Leonardo, Stilo and Stile, and the limited edition number of this pen. This will be a run of 180 units. Um, I've always cared for the subtle engraving on Leonardo pens as well. It's there, but it isn't too in your face. You need to look closely in order to see it. The barrel is straight for a little bit over an inch before tapering down. 
On the end, there is another thin band signifying the beginning of the blind cap, and then the end of the barrel, like the top of the cap, comes to a smooth coned point. The cap twists off and just over a rotation, and underneath we have a number six stainless steel nib. While Leonardo is now producing their gold nibs in-house, they are still using Yovo for their stainless steel nibs. They call this imprint their La Finice nib, which is Italian for the Phoenix. This nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and a 1.5 stub. Um, one of the few issues I have with this pen is that I felt that having a ruthenium plated nib would have uh, matched the resin and the rest of the trim on this pen just a little bit better than the rhodium trim. Just a small qualm though. And here's a look at the plastic feed. I've always cared for this section design found on the majority of Memento Zero models. I find it to be ergonomic. It begins straight before angling up, and then you have the threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. I will say that if you look closely, you can see a number of chips and inclusions in the threads. I believe this is due to the glitter, which is infused in the resin, and those gaps are where some of the glitter material has been exposed during the process of grinding out the threads. Um, I could be wrong, but that seemed like a logical conclusion to me. Uh, while I'll admit that under magnification it doesn't look great, with the naked eye I couldn't even notice that to be an issue, uh, and I could not feel any issue at all when capping or uncapping the pen. So I would categorize this as more of a under the radar cosmetic issue that really is only obvious under heavy magnification. Um, I find Memento Zeros to be very comfortable in the hand. Um, I really like the feeling of this matte finish against the inside of my palm. Uh, the cap does post, and it does post securely. Um, I don't feel that posting adds an inordinate amount of length to this pen, nor does it backweight the pen. Um, I find it to be very well balanced, both posted and unposted. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. Um, I don't believe it comes with any cartridges, but a converter is included. Something I noticed uh, on other Leonardo pens in my collection, the metal back portion of the converter is engraved with a company name. On this converter, it is printed on the translucent portion. I would assume that this is a change which has been made for all of their converters. Um, I mentioned this previously, but the Memento Zero does have a blind cap. If you so choose, you can ink up the pen without removing the barrel. Personally, I prefer to remove the barrel just so I can get a good look at the fill that I'm getting. If you're dealing with a challenging ink bottle or low ink levels, sometimes you're not quite sure if you got a good fill or not. So I like being able to instantly see that. Um, as I mentioned up top, this Cometa model is an exclusive limited edition model only available through Stilo and Stile, and it is available to purchase now. If you use the coupon code BFW2022 for non-VAT customers, the price of this pen will only be 124 euros, which equates to right around $130, which is a great price for a Memento Zero. If you don't have a Leonardo in your collection, this would be a good opportunity to pick one up for a very reasonable price. And it would be a cool looking limited edition to boot. Uh, there are only 180 of these pens and I believe they'll most likely not be around for very long. So if this interests you, I would recommend checking out the Stilo and Stile site sooner rather than later. Uh, there's also a link in the notes below. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Leonardo Stilo and Stile Cometa. Um, now, I wanted to give you another close-up look at this material. I just think it's incredible. Um, the Prisma is by far my favorite, but this one is a, a close second. I just think that this is incredible material. And like I said, I think the matte finish is really the best decision for this. It would have made it a little bit too shiny if it was more polished. Uh, and I just really like the looks of this material. It's really deep. And then, you know, those glitter uh, kind of pieces are really not that glittery. They're not really in your face. It's kind of a, a subtle kind of glitter and a subtle kind of uh, brilliance, so to speak. So I really enjoyed this pen. But in regard to some size comparisons, um, this is what it looks like with that um, Prisma. The Prisma is slightly larger. 
Uh, and then here it is with a uh, another brand, relatively brand new uh, Leonardo, which is the Momento Zero Grande 2.0, which actually has an ink window. Uh, and then here it is with that Momento Magico. In regard to some non-Leonardo pens, uh, here it is with a Mont Blanc, and this is the Enzo Ferrari model. Um, here it is with a Visconti Homo Sapiens. This is the Sterling Silver model. And then finally, a brand new pen that actually just showed up today that I'm really excited about. And that is a pen from Rockster. And that is, I believe this is called the Daydreamer. I'm not 100% sure. I can't remember. My previous model is called the Daydreamer, but this is slightly different uh, model. So it might be named something differently. But I just love this pen. This is actually burled maple that's been infused with resin. So it's kind of been stabilized. Uh, and just the... Uh, Unique patterning on here is amazing. And I can't, I haven't even inked it up yet, so uh, I'm looking forward to doing so. But this is what it looks like in comparison with the Leonardo. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, um, here it is with the Homo sapiens. Uh, and here it is with the Momento Zero Grande 2.0. And then here it is with the Prisma. So here we go with the Leonardo. And this is plus Stilo. Stile. And this is a Momento Zero, and this is the Cometa. And this is a broad stainless steel nib. And the ink that I'm using is one of my favorites, which happens to be from Stilo and Stile. And this is Roman Bronze Oxidation. This is what the ink looks like. It's just a color that I really enjoy, kind of that uh, bluish green. Uh, it's very similar to Leonardo Smeraldo, which is another color that I really enjoy. Uh, and then just as a comparison, uh, this is in along in the same families. This is the Ink Dependence uh, Pannonia Cheerio Water Bus. This is kind of more of a green blue, and this is more of a blue green. This is what their 30 milliliter bottle looks like. Uh, you know, the only thing I wish is that uh, this is a rather shallow bottle. I wish it was a little bit of a larger bottle, but this ink is really nice and I really enjoy it. Okay, here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, you know, I really enjoy this broad nib. It is fairly smooth and it does lay down a nice thick broad line. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of it. You can see you can get some shading out of this ink. Uh, but the ink flow is decent in regard to reverse writing. Uh, it's actually very smooth. and lays down a nice fine line. And then in regard to some fast writing, The feed keeps up just fine. I, you know, I actually really like this broad nib. I don't know if I have too many of Leonardo's uh, broad stainless steel nibs, but um, I uh, would definitely pick up another one because I really enjoy this. It's very, very smooth. So there we have the Leonardo Stilo and Stile Momento Zero Cometa. Uh, make sure to use the uh, discount code that can be found in the notes below, uh, as well as the link to the site. Like I had mentioned, with 180 units, this pen will probably not stay around for very long. So if it's something that interests you, I'd recommend checking it out sooner rather than later. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.